Hello, my name is Kristen Watson. I'm an associate professor at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy and a member of the Atrium Cardiology Collaborative at the school. This video is focusing on peripheral arterial disease and the physical exam that we should employ when we are evaluating patients who may be at risk for this disease. This video is an accompanying piece for a blog that is posted on our website that goes through who, which patients to screen and when. The link to this blog can be found at the end of this presentation. In this program, we are going to show you a video of conducting the physical examination on the patient. But before we do that, let's go through a few components. It's important to remember when we're thinking of peripheral arterial disease that our patients do not always quote unquote, follow the rules and have those classic intermittent claudication symptoms of peripheral arterial disease. Therefore, one of our biggest tools in evaluating patients for the presence of peripheral arterial disease symptoms or signs of the disease is using our hands and our eyes to evaluate a patient. The presence of any of these findings on the exam does not make the diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease. If these findings are present, that should trigger us to refer a patient for further evaluation for diagnostic testing, such as the ankle brachial index. Now let's review these elements. It's important to when that we are completing this exam that we do this on both the right and left side because we wanna look for differences in the presence of these things between the two legs. So the first thing we wanna do is inspect. We wanna look for differences in color in the lower extremity. We wanna assess for the presence of hair. Is the hairline symmetrical? Do we notice that there is less hair growth on one extremity than the other? If we see that, that man is not specific for peripheral arterial disease, but that could be a sign that there's decreased blood flow in the lower extremity that has less hair growth. In patients who maybe shaving their legs, we wanna ask our patients about how often do they shave their legs? Do they notice that the hair comes back thicker or more quickly on one lower extremity than the other? Since we may not be, we may not be able to see the presence of hair on that exam. We wanna assess the temperature in legs, in the legs, is one leg cooler than the other? If we're noticing that one leg is cooler than the other, or even if both legs are cool, we wanna do some more digging to evaluation to figure out why that is the case. And are wounds present? And when you notice a wound, we wanna ask the patient about why the wound happened and we wanna assess further regarding if the wound is healing appropriately or not. In the presence of non-healing wounds, this again would trigger us to, do for, to send our patient for further evaluation for screening of peripheral arterial disease. The other important thing that we can do when we are assessing for peripheral arterial disease is to palpate the dorsalis pedius artery and the posterior tibial artery. The dorsalis pedius artery branches off from the anter anterior tibial artery and this delivers blood flow to the surface of the foot. And I'll show you in a few minutes in the exam how you can easily find this. Anywhere from maybe four to 12% of patients will inherently have this artery pulse absent. The posterior tibial artery though, that is rarely congenitally absent in patients. So when we do find patients who have either of these pulses absent, but especially that posterior tibial, tibial artery pulse, these patients should be referred for further evaluation and screening for peripheral arterial disease. And this posterior tibial artery comes from off of the popliteal artery. And as mentioned, this one is rarely ab congenitally absent in patients. When evaluating the pulse, it is important to document the strength of pulses. And especially we wanna look for the difference in the strength between the feet. So if you find that one foot has a weaker pulse than the other, again, that would be maybe a signal that this person has requires further evaluation. It especially becomes important in patients with known peripheral arterial disease that we are rating the strength of their pulses. And if they are diminishing over time, we need further evaluation is warranted. There's two commonly used grading scales for 
reporting the strength of pulses and I have these listed here for you. All right, so now let's see this physical examination in action. So the first thing we wanna start with is the inspection of the lower extremities. We wanna make sure throughout all parts of this examination that we're assessing both the right and the left lower extremity. So the first thing I like to do is inspect for color. Noticing there's no differences in color between the two lower extremities, we wanna go on and look for the presence of hair. So you can see that the hairline is the same and similar growth on both of the legs. Again, making sure to inspect both legs and looking for differences. In female patients, you wanna ask them again about shaving habits, how frequently they are shaving, and if, they're, if hair growth returns the same on both of the extremities equally. We then wanna assess for the temperature. I like to examine both legs at the same time. Um, so I like to start lower down and then move my way up the, up the legs, noticing if there's any differences between the two. We also wanna assess for the presence of wounds. So looking over the front of the leg, looking at the back as well. We wanna look at the, the tops of the feet as well as the bottoms of the feet and then go, making sure to go in between the toes as well. I also like to give my patients a heads up of why I'm doing these things so they're not wondering why I'm poking around on their feet. When I, if I would notice that a wound is present, I wanna make sure to ask the patient about what was the cause of that wound and if it is healing. So I simply like to ask about, you know, what was the cause, when did that ha happen and do they feel that it has been healing appropriately? Have they seen the wound shrink in size over time? If they are non-healing wounds, that's a trigger to me that we need to get further evaluation for the patient. The next thing we wanna do is palpate the lower, palpate for our dorsalis pedius and posterior arteries. So an easy way to find that dorsalis pedius artery is using this bony notch on the foot, the navicular bone, and you can find the pulse right here. Refer to the slides for the differences in grading for pulse strength of these pulses that you will find. It's very helpful, especially in somebody who has peripheral arterial disease, that you are putting in that grading so that the next provider can assess if there are any changes. Again, that may be a little subjective between people, but it's really helpful for documentation and if things will be progressing. We then wanna look for the posterior tibial artery, which is located behind the medial malleolus. So we started here with his right foot. We wanna now move on to the left foot. You wanna pay attention if there's differences in pulses between the strength of pulses between the two feet. So easily, if you need to, go back and find the pulse on the other foot. And then again, moving to the posterior tibial artery. Remember that some patients, it can be inherently absent, but if you do find that is rare that it can occur. So if there is an absent, there are absent pulses or weak pulses, we wanna refer for further evaluation for screening for peripheral arterial disease. So here are a few references listed here for you. One is an excellent review article about the physical exam. This is about a pa regarding patients with peripheral arterial disease, but I think there are excellent tips in this article for performing the physical examination. And then you have the link to our blog here that you can read about peripheral arterial disease and who to screen and when. Again, it's important to remember that when screening patients for, a for peripheral arterial disease, we can first start our screening in, the, in our practices, getting, laying our hands on our patients, performing that physical exam in those high-risk individuals to see if there are any signs or symptoms of peripheral arterial disease present. And remembering, if we do have concerns based on the physical exam findings that someone has peripheral arterial disease, that we should be referring them on for further evaluation so that a diagnosis can be made for peripheral arterial disease. Again, even though we may not find positive findings or signs in our physical exam, 
we should really consider the patient's risk for peripheral arterial disease or if they have symptomatology as well to determine if that further diagnostic testing is warranted. Thank you.